This module looks at the style of project management required for agile project management. It confirms the constraints that need to be managed and what is seen as the main factors that are instrumental to delivering successful agile projects. The use of the project approach questionnaire in determining risks to the project is investigated. This module also looks at how testing and configuration management are applied to agile project management. Agile project management requires a more hands-off management style. Project managers are more focused on troubleshooting rather than directing. Agile project management is a practical process designed to cope with uncertainty by progressing through a series of small steps and inspecting and adapting after each step. This is very similar to a sailing journey. There is a big plan, but a sailor does not expect to predict the exact time they will be at a specific GPS position. Good sailors adapt to the tides, winds and currents as they go. This is also typical of Agile. The progress of the project is measured by the delivery of products, not by the activities to produce them. Velocity is the speed at which the products are delivered. Agile project management is designed to keep the velocity at a high rate throughout the project. The teams are empowered and as such will be self-directed, rather than taking directions from the project manager. This means that the style of project management should be more hands-off, where the project manager focuses on resolving problems, so that the team can get on with doing what needs to be done. Collaborative effort is key to the success of agile project management. The columns on the left show the characteristics of a team that needs tight management, and this may be typical of a more traditional style of management. Agile projects are very dynamic, with rapidly evolving solutions and frequent demonstrations to the business ambassadors and business advisors. There's no time to manage this daily activity using a bureaucratic approach. Everybody will know what is happening because they are part of a small team working closely together. The team takes the initiative to produce what is required. The team work together to produce the solution in close collaboration and cooperation. Regular reviews are built into the process to ensure the team inspect and adapt. The teams take a much more proactive rather than reactive approach to the project. The biggest risk to successful implementation of agile project management is the culture shift that is required within an organisation to truly want or need to become agile. The organisation must be prepared to adopt the principles, understand what this means to the way they need to operate to get the most out of agile. Consideration needs to be given to the roles, the people available to fulfil the roles and their understanding of what is required of them this may be different from their existing project management roles. Agile project management needs people fully committed to the approach to be fully effective. The project variables need to be understood. Contingency depends on there being sufficient flexibility in the depth and detail of the features. The project will be seriously compromised if the majority of the features are defined as must-haves. The project approach questionnaire helps to identify the risks in using Agile project management and then steps can be taken to overcome them. The drivers for the project need to be understood and the project approach questionnaire is a mechanism to help get the approach right. Before we look at the questionnaire, we need to consider the key factors that are instrumental to the success of Agile project management, which we will look at in the next two lessons. In a traditional project approach, functionality is fixed early on in the specification and the project promises to deliver a 100% solution. The project manager then manages resources and time to deliver the agreed features. In agile project management, the project time frame is absolutely fixed by the end of the foundations phase, once enough analysis and design has been done to give a reasonable level of confidence in what is needed. The team size is fixed because, as research and experience show, adding more resources to an already late project usually makes it even more late. Requirements must be variable. Printing a newspaper is a good example. 
It must be printed on time, but if a new story arises, they don't delay printing and delivery of the paper. They drop a lower priority story. Sometimes a critical new item is included early as a news flash, with details in the next edition. Typically, traditional projects allow a 10 to 20 percent contingency around cost and time to deliver the fixed features. Contingency in agile project management is typically driven by the use of the Moscow technique. The time box plan should allocate no more than 50 to 60 percent of the overall effort to the must-have requirements. This leaves 40 to 50 percent of the effort to be allocated to the shoulds and coulds. In the event that the musts require more effort than planned, effort can be redirected from the shoulds and coulds. It is, however, an expectation that the project will deliver more than the musts. The high level of contingency means that only in exceptional circumstances will the project only deliver the musts. When a situation develops that makes reaching the projected results difficult or impossible, then decisions need to be made on how to resolve the situation. This can occur at different hierarchical levels in the project. The decision topics for each level need to be documented in the management approach definition, so that each level knows what the limits of empowerment are and when to escalate. Only major issues are escalated beyond the team. Changes to the depth of detail are what agile is all about, allowing the team to make changes as necessary to get the job done. Changes in the breadth of the solution are changes to the overall scope of the project, which was set at the end of foundations. These changes in breadth, for example, to add a major new function, will need to be escalated to the business visionary and maybe even the business sponsor. Where the project is part of a program, then escalation becomes more complex, and all parties need to have a clear escalation process in place to enable fast decision making. The following factors are important in making agile project management work effectively in any organization, and are seen as factors instrumental to success. The philosophy of delivering the right thing at the right time and handling change dynamically may result in less than 100% of the solution being understood. The solution development team need to be empowered to make rapid, knowledge-based decisions. It's important to have a high degree of business involvement, which comes from the business ambassador and advisor. This ensures that decisions are business-led. Incremental delivery enables early return on investment, and the business benefits are achieved as early as possible. How the solution development team gets access to the business roles needs to be considered. Co-location is ideal, but often work is split across sites or across the world. The solution development team stability relies on the use of rich communication, team knowledge, and having an optimum solution development team size of seven plus or minus two. There's always a risk of bringing in additional resources during the project to catch up. A common traditional practice, which in most cases doesn't work, as productive team members slow down while they bring new team members up to speed. It also usually means stealing resources from another project. The importance of the team memory cannot be underestimated, especially since there's no detailed signed specification to fall back on. A supportive commercial relationship requires collaboration between all parties in order to achieve the best possible solution in the given timescale. These factors need to be addressed early, as they're key to successful agile projects. Where the issues cannot be addressed, then they should be treated as a risk to agile project management and managed accordingly. Many projects successfully use agile project management while still identifying that some of these factors will not be in place. These projects recognise that agile project management offers reduced risk. Yet still offers a much higher probability of success than adopting an approach that statistically often fails to deliver the expected outcomes. Typically, this project approach questionnaire is completed by the project manager, with the sponsor, visionary, and technical coordinator during the feasibility phase. 
It will be revisited by the end of the foundations phase, when there is a better understanding of the working relationship and some of the early answers captured during feasibility may have changed. There is no expectation of a 100% set of strongly agree responses. Any neutral or negative responses present a risk to the agile approach, and these risks need to be addressed and mitigated. The results of the PAQ will help populate the risk log. Testing is an important practice in upholding the principle to never compromise quality. It takes place throughout the life cycle. The value of early defect identification should not be underestimated. It can be tens of times cheaper to rectify a problem during exploration as compared to production. Therefore, the aim is to fail fast. The inclusion of the solution tester, business and developer roles within the solution development team encourages collaborative testing. There needs to be some form of documented test scripts. They don't need to be formal, but there is a need to be able to recreate errors and then prove the fix has worked. Testing the solution from a process perspective should be started as soon as possible. An agile product should be tested by someone other than its creator to ensure that both the requirement is understood and that the product meets it. Active involvement of the business roles ensures that an independent perspective is applied. Tests need to be prioritized because it's not possible to exhaustively test all products. The primary method of prioritization is the Moscow technique. Each test should be aligned to a requirement with test-driven development, the tests are specified before the product is created. This ensures that the acceptance criteria are confirmed before any effort is wasted on creating the wrong product. Risk-based testing means ensuring that tests are focused on the higher risk areas first, rather than running lots of low-value tests. Configuration management is an important aspect of Agile projects. It enables the team to keep control of the solution as it evolves, to avoid duplication or conflict of effort, and to ensure that, at all times, reverting to the last safe point, a baseline, is always possible. Configuration management involves identifying all the component parts, configuration items and supporting items, such as documents from across the life cycle controlling their storage and knowing their status, i.e. draft or accepted, and their interdependencies at all times. This contributes to the change control approach and to quality control. The configuration management approach must be appropriate for the project. Excessive formality should be avoided. It must not impede progress or prevent necessary change. All too often the solution development team, left to their own devices, will avoid deciding to baseline a product. Therefore, the configuration management approach needs a champion within the project who is responsible for administering the approach and resolving any differences of opinion. The configuration management champion is often the technical coordinator or a nominated member of the solution development team. This module has explored many of the project management fundamentals that are important to take into account when delivering an Agile project. If the instrumental success factors are not understood, then the use of the Agile project management can introduce risks. The Project Approach Questionnaire forms a useful basis for considering these risks. Testing is important in upholding the Never Compromise on Quality principle. This module has also looked at configuration management which is a discipline that still needs to be applied to an Agile project, and the formality of it needs to be agreed at the start of the project.